patients at the John Radcliffe and I'm a neuroscientist, I lead a research group here at the Kavlo Institute. Our research aims to understand the fundamental biology that drives the pathology in Parkinson's and translate that into something that is beneficial for our patients. How are we getting on? Generally, yeah. I'm not doing too bad. Uh, although patients with Parkinson's present with a familiar movement disorder, the pathology actually starts more than 10 years before people come to our clinic. And this is because uh, brain cells uh, fail to handle a small protein called alpha-synuclein, which accumulates in, in the nerve cells and damages vulnerable uh, neurons. From, from a work perspective, standing up in front of a group, doing presentations, I was doing them all the time. And now I find that even just simple conversation, I, I struggle over certain words or terms or whatever, and there's no logic to it. It would be helpful if we could identify these changes during this early, what we call, prodromal phase before the irreversible stage of pathology starts. Uh, in our latest publication in Java Neurology, we have revealed the promise of extra, a subtype of extracellular vesicles in identifying changes in alpha nucleon in those at high risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Extracellular vesicles are small nanoparticles that are released from every type of cell, including nerve cells. They reach the body fluids and eventually blood. And their function is to transport signals between different types of cells or different organs. In our laboratory, in collaboration with colleagues from chemistry, we have developed an antibody-based assay to isolate specifically uh, those physicals that are derived from nerve cells. In the first study of its kind, we looked at 365 individuals with variable risk of developing Parkinson's, and these were recruited from here in Oxford and from centres in Marburg and Cologne in Germany, as well as a multi-centre cohort in the US, the Parkinson's Progression Markets Initiative study. We found that those individuals at highest risk of having Parkinson's, and that is defined as more than 80% probability of developing Parkinson's based on research criteria, had a twofold increase in alpha synuclein levels in neuronal extracellular vesicles, and the assay could accurately differentiate those at high risk from those with a low risk of less than 5% or healthy controls. Overall, the test could uh, distinguish uh, those at high risk of developing Parkinson's from healthy controls in nine out of 10 times, which is unprecedented for a blood test in this space. In a small group of individuals who went on to develop Parkinson's, the test was positive in more than 80% of cases, as much as seven years before the onset of symptoms. In this group, there was an association between the levels of synuclein and interval to conversion to disease. In other words, the higher the amount of synuclein in the extracellular vesicles, the longer it took to convert to Parkinson's, suggesting that the release of alpha synuclein in extracellular vesicles is a way for nerve cells to rid themselves of this potentially toxic protein. This is for us comforting to see changes in patients, that reflect the cellular pathways we defined in the past, where we showed that oxynuclein is um, targeted inside cells to endosomes, which are also the hubs for the generation of extracellular vesicles. Overall, uh, our research demonstrates how fundamental insights into oxynuclein biology can be translated into a biomarker, in this case, for the identification and stratification of Parkinson's risk. No two people are the same, and so it's, it's somewhat difficult to try and get a view on what the future holds for me, because there's no way of accurately predicting that. A screening test that can be implemented at scale to identify those individuals at high risk early for the instigation of disease-modifying therapies when they become available will be an important part of our medical armory in our quest to cure Parkinson's as is currently done with screening programs for certain common types of cancer. Our studies with extracellular vesicles have opened a number of research directions and it's really wonderful to be based here at the Cavalier Institute. The multidisciplinary nature of the Institute 
means that we can study these visibles of single particles, sing single molecule resolution. We can perform native mass spectrometry to identify uh, new uh, markers on them and we can develop new technologies, new platforms to measure them more accurately in patient samples.